WLSC Tiger Radio is your station for River Talk 2.0. The same show that you watch on WWMB CW21 and HTC Cable Channel 4 is now on the radio too. River Talk 2.0 with Banana Jack Murphy and the Freakin' Deacon right here on WLSC Tiger Radio. Hey, We're back for another show. I'm telling you, but I'm excited about it. We got an old and new sheriff in town. Uh, uh, an old <laughs> and new sheriff. <laughs> oh, I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, you get it? Yeah. Get it? yeah. Unopposed. It's just election time, isn't yeah, it? right, yeah. exactly. So the filing date is passed. Yeah. Hello, Sheriff Philip Thompson. Well, hello. Good, uh, good morning, everybody. Yeah. I'd shake your hand, but it freak us both out. So uh, yeah, we do the yeah. chicken wings. Well, well, welcome the to the show. I'd shake yes. your hand, but you think I'm sucking up? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. It's nice to be. That's here. That's kind of crazy, man. It's nice to be. Uh, here. An election where you don't shake hands and kiss babies. I'm it's, telling. This you. is weird. Well, mm. I promise you, it's very different the yeah. way the way that that we we're, we're living now in the times that we're living in, and some of the things that we're having to do is definitely different. I talked to a barber the other day before they actually. You know, issued uh, the suggestion that they should should close, and he says, "Man, I don't even want to admit this, but I'm looking at people differently now." <laughs> oh, yeah. I think everyone is. Good but, night. I mean, you know, it's um, it could be good, but then it could have some negative connotations as well. Well, I hope it doesn't have that. But we all we have to change the way that we have always done things. Uh, hopefully folks will be listening, will be paying attention. Um, you know, uh, as this goes on, the seriousness of it just seems to become more of a reality to each and every one of us of, of what, the, what the potential for this is. And so we are doing things a lot differently. But something that I hope that everyone will do and what I tell our folks, and we started out, we started out with this, and and uh, and all was to stay calm. We just stay calm. And at times we've been tested in that area when mm-hmm. changes come about and things we have to do differently. Um, uh, sometimes that tests us. But if we can just stay calm, if we stay calm, maybe the folks around us can be calm. But now what we're talking about, and what I talked about yesterday in a meeting was patience. We have got to be patient. We need to listen to these uh, executive orders and the way uh, and to do things. They're being done for a reason. Uh, nobody's just sitting there looking for something else to do. Um, so when we get these ex- executive orders that come down from the governor's office and then we look at on, uh, on a county level uh, what we need to do to help implement them and to get the citizens to adhere to what we're we're trying to get done out there and it's all for safety of all the meetings that i've been in both on conference calls at the state level conference calls locally uh, meetings that we have had to plan and to coordinate and to get the message out every meeting safety is stressed that's the number one goal for everyone. They're not just making up an order just to do an order. Because for each one that comes through, that takes more resources and that takes more things to do. Right, sure. But it's all about safety. Every meeting I've been in, that's what we've talked about. Well, let's let's start uh, with, with all the different areas that the Sheriff's Department's involved in. Let's begin at the courthouse. Okay. How have things changed there? Well, our courts have been, uh, uh, they're they're not holding general sessions court. Now, we do emergency hearings. If there is a situation where uh, a hearing has to be done, emergency hearing, especially in family court area with juveniles and things of this nature or with the family court bench warrants. But you'll have a judge, you'll have the defendant, we'll transport the defendant down there, and then you'll have one or two officers. You don't have the, the, uh, the people there. You know, only the people that's affected to keep your numbers as low as you can. Okay. Okay. But the other courts, we're, we're not holding at this particular time. But the county's still doing business. Uh, and we aren't just talking about the courthouse. We're talking about the courthouse, and we're talking about the administrative building. 
uh, with with the auditor's office, the treasurer's office, code enforcement, register of deeds, the assessor's office. Uh, those there, there's still staff there. Good. Okay, and there's still staff in the courts as far as the court personnel, uh, with especially with, with, with probate court. You got people coming in on a daily basis. But what we do is. The citizens can call the courts or call the administrative building and set up an appointment mm-hmm. to be there at a certain time. If they can handle it through the drive through at the treasurer's office, they can do that. If they handle it through the drive through some of the county folks with uh, planning and zoning and uh, with code enforcement has moved over to the Santee Cooper building. The county had bought that, so they've moved some of their offices over there. They have a drive-through there, if you if you recall, where right. they used okay. to come up. Sure. So they're using, they're utilizing the drive-through. So there's no public access except by appointment only. Now we have personnel there. We have deputies uh, throughout the administrative building. Sure. We have deputies, obviously, still in the courthouse. So when people come in, uh, the first thing they'll see when they walk into the atrium is they'll see our deputies, and we'll be there to assist them with getting in touch with whomever they need to get in touch with if they need to go to if they need to speak to someone in any of the offices in the admin building or in the justice center we'll contact that office they will send a representative from their office down to the atrium to conduct whatever business that they can we have drop-off boxes for uh, plans for um, uh, construction for code enforcement things of that nature that that they can they can put those items in there. They might have to sit there for a couple of days to decontaminate before somebody will come pick them up. Mm-hmm. But we have, we, have a, we have a scanner out front where if uh, something needs to be faxed to one of those offices, they can put it in the scanner, and we got the computer hooked up to it where our personnel can send it to wherever they need. Oh, okay. So there's, there's, a lot, there's still a lot going on down there. So we, live bodies and no robots. I mean, you know, I've yes. noticed, uh, you know, if, if I needed to get something done, you, you call now and you, they put you, here's a robot here, taking you to another robot over here yeah. until you finally, if you're lucky, you'll get somebody live. Well, we, so you've kind of got that down then, huh? We do. Yeah. We do. And, uh, and I'm going to tell you, our staff is, is doing a marvelous job. Uh, obviously, safety is a huge concern of ours uh, for our staff. I mean, uh, we got to keep our staff safe, okay? As a, as a, you know, that's a, a responsibility to do. We want them safe, but if our staff gets sick or something happens, who's going to carry on the mission with the citizens? So we, we concentrate very hard sure. on, on, on making sure that we, you know, obviously you've heard it, and you've heard it, and you're going to hear it some more. You know, wash your hands, mm-hmm. don't touch your face. Um, you know, use hand sanitizer. Um, it just um, all those things we hear, but they're for a purpose. You know, I got to say when it myself personally when it first started, I, I didn't know, I didn't understand the seriousness that it was. I knew it had to be serious, but I didn't think we'd get to the area that we're at now. We virtually set and shut this county down. Sure, we have, and not um, just the county, and. Uh, Country, yeah, the country. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm. I guess I'm but focusing. Hey, on, that's good. You I'm need focus, to focus on but, the county. But um, it's just, it's serious, serious stuff. And um, we're gonna get through it. I'm gonna tell you. You look at the disasters that Ory County has had, what oh, we've yeah. dealt with in the past, as far as storms and floods and 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 uh, closing closing every highway there is down but one way. You know, we always come through it. And the reason we do is because of the men and women in the, 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 of our county who come together in a time of crisis. This is what we got. We're just doing something different that we've never done before. Right. But we got to be dealing with the same people. And the citizens of this county, they're tough. They care. They care about each other. When someone's in trouble, they come out from everywhere to help and to assist. That's what makes Ory County great yeah. that's what it makes our country great absolutely so i'm proud of of uh, of who they are it's just we our citizens everybody we're walking on uncharted ground absolutely and we're learning every day do we make every decision perfect no but it's made based upon what we consider to be safety for our citizens 
and everyone concerned. We'll get through it. Well, let's head to the jail now. Yes, yeah. sir. Reuben Long Detention Center, you can't yeah. run it the way you did before. No, and and we don't. We have um, we've we, we've stopped all. Uh, you know, we, we've locked it down. Virtually, it's locked down um, with uh, uh, our empl- with the citizens being able to go out to the detention center and visit. No okay. visiting for me. I'm not going out. There. Okay. Well, so, so you're not going to release the prisoners like you do in L.A. <laughs> no, sir. We haven't done that. <laughs> now, um, first of all, let, let's talk about the safety. Let's talk about the safety of the inmates, and let's talk about the safety of our staff out there. Because, like I said earlier, we got to keep our staff safe. So we have, uh, when a in, when a person has been arrested and they come to the detention center, they go through a screening process. Everybody that walks into that facility. Their temperature is checked. Okay. Inmate employee. We have questionnaire that we've asked every inmate that comes through pertaining to this. We have obviously questionnaires for other for normal things, but we have added questions to find out if they've been out the country, if they've been around someone who's had this virus or things of that nature. We got medical staff 24 hours a day at that facility. That if the, any of those answers come out to be yes they're screened by our medical staff at that point we have situations put up to where we can quarantine folks if we have to uh every employee goes through those questions every employee every day every day mm. every day because you'll have some people who work shift work some people work today that don't work tomorrow and then they come back they're off for, they're off for two days or three days and then when they come back to work we want to know if they've been exposed or anything while they've been gone. Yeah, where'd they go visit or whatever. That's yeah, exactly, exactly right. Who mm-hmm. they've been around. So we screen every day. Every, and then you will have citizens who need to come out for a bond hearing. Let's say they're a victim of a crime and a person's been arrested and they have the opportunity to be at that bond hearing. So when they come in, they're screened. Their temperature's taken. They go through the same questions that, that everyone else goes to. You have attorneys who's visiting clients out there now we don't do the contact visit obviously we're doing it with the glass portions and things of that nature mm-hmm. okay but from our director to the last person in line everybody walks in that jail myself included everyone has their temperature taken and we're asked those questions we have um, we've uh, obviously stopped what I said all visits all access um, we our super, from our management to our supervisors to our personnel, which in constant communication with what's going on in their lives. Well, what's the process when someone does a crime and then gets gets delivered to you guys? Well, when they when they get delivered, we go through that screening. We go through the whole thing. We again? go through the whole screening process, and then we have a section of the detention center at this particular time that when new when we get new folks we have a certain section that we put them that where they're at they don't go into straight into general population and they're we quarantined have, basically before okay. they go in right that's exactly yeah. right but we're providing uh you know we're functioning like we normally do as far as meals uh, uh, laundry uh, medical medical is just super super important in, in the aspects that that we um that, that we're doing out there uh, we have talked with the we've worked with the courts and we have been able to move some people out we um, but we don't want to take someone who is a repeat offender that and, and you'd be surprised that some people that that will get out come back in get out come back in that's if we got a person there they're quarantined they're safe why are we going to put them back out on the street to come back in again? Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. I so, mean, so you do have your Otis's. Yes, we do. come in and out, right? Honestly, we do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could give you some figures on, right. on how many times some people have been in, and you'd say uh, it's unbelievable, but it's not. It's not a lot, okay? It's a few, but we work with our court. We work with our solicitor. We work with our magistrates. We have moved. Our numbers are down, but let's face it, there's – the reason we have a jail is to keep our community safe. Sure. And there's people that need to be there. Yeah. 
Yeah. We're in constant. Uh, I know a few that aren't there that need to be there. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> we're, in constant, I do. we're in constant communication with the Department of Corrections mm-hmm. as far as um, uh, getting the folks there that have been sentenced that need to go. We've adopted some policy and procedure on the way Department of Corrections uh, uh, is doing we're using the same format with questions and and things that we do. Um, communication between our state, local, and cities. We're also in communication with every police chief in this county on a daily basis. Well, how about the, the, the just the regular uh, male or female officer out there? I mean, things can that can pop up, accidents or, or different things. I mean, man, you then you guys are right out there on the floor. I mean, you're you're laying yeah, that right out right. on the line now, mm. more so than ever. Yeah, yeah, we we do it, and our staff. I, I, if I, I can't say enough good things about the men and women that's on our staff and the dedication, and and the commitment that they have, in the jobs that they have, and uh, we, you know, we we tell them, um, and you know, stress gets to them. It gets to gets to everybody. Oh, sure. Stay calm. Be patient. Don't panic. Right. Yes, sir. Can't demand it. Can't. Yeah, that adds a, a, an entirely different element to home life, too, because you, you know the questions you get when you get home, and yeah. this is just another question you're going to be asked when you get home. And so God bless you guys. And guys. Well, we're going to make it. We, we're going to do it together. Odie County style, the way we know how to do it. Mm-hmm. Any campaigning going on now? I mean, I'm going to tell you, that's changed. Yeah, that's got to be. <laughs> <laughs> the way you do that has, has definitely changed. Um, but, uh, oh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of campaigning going yeah. on. You know, it's in the season. And so this is what we do. Interesting and, times. It's different. Sheriff, thank you so much for coming to see us. Thank you. Yeah, there you yeah, go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like getting elbowed by a sheriff. <laughs> I'd rather do the chicken wing than the stanky leg. <laughs> well, that's for another day. We'll see you next time on River Talk.